Good morning and welcome to Trinity Anglican Church, St. John, New Brunswick. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. And this is the Sunday we set aside for celebrating the consecration of the church. And on this Sunday, we also have a special service of holy baptism, where we'll be baptizing Alyssa Jordan Weaver. Last month, her son was baptized, Jack. So Jack brings his mother to us today to be baptized. So that's a beautiful thing to happen as we celebrate the consecration of this church and all of what our loyalist ancestors set out to do when they landed here in 1783 and continue to do, live up to their mission. We welcome Emily this morning. Maureen couldn't be with us. I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but Emily, we welcome you here today to lead us in our musical worship. The opening, the opening hymn is, is 508 in the Big Blue Book, Common Praise, and she'll be singing one and three. I heard the voice of Jesus. Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. Let us pray. The colic for the Sunday. Lord God, our Redeemer, who heard the cry of your people and sent your servant Moses to lead them out of slavery, free us from the tyranny of sin and death, and by leading of your spirit, bring us to our promised land, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please remain seated as we listen to the word of God. reading is taken from Genesis chapter 28 beginning at the 10th verse. Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place he put it under his head and lay down in that place. 
And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give you, and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth. And you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go. And will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I did know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. The word of the Lord. Amen. Our selected psalm this morning is Psalm 84, and you'll find it on page 817 in the Green Prayer Book. I will read it. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts! My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord, my heart and my flesh rejoicing in the living God. The sparrow has found her house, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from the height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. Lord, God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand in my own room, and to stand at the threshold of the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is both sun and shield. He will give grace and glory. No good thing will the Lord withhold from those who walk with integrity. O Lord of hosts, happy are they who put their trust in you. God of pilgrims, teach us to recognize your dwelling place in love, generosity, and support of those with whom we share our journey, and help us to worship you in our response to those who need our care. For all the world is your temple, and every human heart is a sign of your presence, made known to us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our New Testament reading is taken from the first letter of Peter, chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. Rid yourself, therefore, of all malice, of all guile, insincerity, envy, and all slander. Like newborn infants long for the pure and spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that, the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
gradual is 430. Emily will sing the first verse, will you come and follow me? St. Matthew's 21st chapter, beginning at the 12th verse. Glory, Glory be to thee, the Lord. Lord. Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who were selling and buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. He said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he cured them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the amazing things that he did, and heard the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they became angry and said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? Jesus said to them, Yes. Have you never read? Out of the mouths of infants and nursing babies, you have prepared praise for yourself, the gospel of Christ. Praise, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. celebrate the consecration of Trinity on this Sunday and we will welcome one of the newest members to Christ Church Alyssa this is the Sunday known as dedication Sunday or the feast of the consecration or the Sunday we honor the dedication of a church how fitting it is for us to remember the foundational moments of this parish in addition, how fitting it is for us to be welcoming a new member into this parish, into, more importantly, into Christ Church, which was the original mission of our ancestors back in 1783 when they established this parish, to be that light <coughs> visible in this uptown peninsula. We're fortunate to have much written about Trinity. We have the history of Trinity that was done at the 100th year by Reverend Canon Brigstock. Is, uh, there's a plaque on the other side of the uh, pulpit that talks about his 
journey here. And that captures 1791 through to 1891. We also have in memoriam a book that was written of Archdeacon Brigstock. We have the Trinity Church of St. John and its memorials to draw from, which speaks of all the gifts that were given and you see around the church. We have the book that Reverend Ken Lyman Harding wrote, The Citizens with the Saints. There's much written of Trinity. And we also have the gift of writing from Reverend Canon Ross Hebb, who wrote the book, The Church of England in Loyalist New Brunswick, 1783 to 1825. There's no shortage of early writings of this parish's establishment. I'll take just a few moments and talk about a few of the pivotal moments and experiences. Our story here begins back in the U.S. at the close of the Revolutionary War in 1783, when approximately 300 men, women, and children landed here on May 18, 1783, at a place that was called the Public Landing, which we know as Market Square or Market Slip. By the end of the year, the count was about 5,000 Loyalists arrived. The Loyalists, upon their arrival, their first care was to establish the place for the church as they laid out the city. The old burial ground near Sydney, I guess it is, or Union, where the old courthouse stood, they cut the trees down there and they were starting to prepare to build a church. Fire took over that whole area, burnt their supplies. They abandoned that location. And then they went a few blocks down on Germain Street and they purchased a frame building where they held their services until they were able to build the old Trinity. It was very clear to them they were never going to consecrate the building down here for a church. They wanted to create much more of a prominent building to the glory of God. So what we are sitting on right here is four building lots, two on Charlotte, two on Germain, all were gifted to the parish to build this church. Old Trinity was built very basic in its structure, out of proportion, if you would think of a church, but they built it according to their means and not going into debt. They built it also with the promise they were going to build onto it and make it much more as the funds came about. Old Trinity served well till the great fire of 1877 when two-thirds of the city was burnt. The cornerstone of the present Trinity that we are in right now was laid on Monday, May 19, 1879. And it's not insignificant of the date. They would have preferred it to be 18th, May 18th, which would have coincided perfectly with the Loyalist landing to connect the Loyalist story, but that would have been on a Sunday. And I expect they did not want to do work on a Sunday. You may be interested in the published price of the schoolhouse we have and Trinity back in its day, and it was 55,985. That was the price back in the day. At the consecration, at the laying of the stone, sorry, the bishop 
said a few encouraging words. He recounted the significance of the anniversary of the landing of the Loyalists. And he also suggested that there's lessons to be drawn from the, our Loyalists of self-sacrifice, which we should build on. This was at the laying of the cornerstone over here. And his parting words were, Here may the gospel of salvation be freely proclaimed, and the rich and the poor meet together to worship the Lord, the maker of them all. As he finalized his message that day. What was interesting is when they laid that cornerstone, there was a lady here, her name was Miss A. Thompson, and she was the daughter of Mr. W. Thompson, who gave the bell to the old Trinity Church. And she provided a link. She was in the old church at the consecra at the the, at the, dead, the first service, which was Christmas, 1791, Christmas Day. She was there, and she was also here for the laying of the cornerstone of the present Trinity, tying the old to the new. The Lord Bishop of Nova Scotia preached at the consecration of this church, which was December 9th, 1880. And he spoke quite eloquently of the people that were hurting, having lost the old Trinity and then going into the new Trinity. And he talked a lot about that in his message. He also stressed the fact that as the church was consecrated, the church was gifted to God to accept this building in the most perfect sense of God's house built especially for his honor as he concluded his remarks he stressed the building is now complete let it be for all in the fullest and truest sense a house of prayer And he stated in his message, and I quote, The nature and object of worship are not generally understood. Many think they attend merely for their own benefit and not for the glory of God. Our primary object of worship is to honor and glor glorify our God. Interesting comments back in the day. We're here today at Trinity, and we take not light our ancestral roots and what they have done to allow us to follow in their footsteps. Our gospel this morning speaks in reverence of this place, the building which was consecrated for the purposes to gather and raise up to God all the glory owed to him. Thanks be to God for you, who are intently devoted in assuring that the work and sacrifices of our ancestors will not be in vain. And many have and will find the love of God alive and well within these walls and all that we do. I'll invite Alyssa to come forward with her family for the baptism.
candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. I present Elizabeth Jordan Weaver to receive the sacrament of baptism. Do you desire to be baptized, Alyssa? Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? I do. do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to obey him as your Lord? Will you, who witness these vows, do all in your power to support Alyssa in her life in Christ? We will. Let us now pray for Alyssa, who is about to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver Alyssa, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open her heart to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill her with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach her to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send her into the world to witness your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring her to the fullness of your grace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. We're halfway down on page 157 now. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over water, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through water, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of of promise. In water your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through the death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who are here cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again, he ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in God, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship and in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will with God's help. 
Will you pre preserve in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I am will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I am will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I am will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. Receive the light of Christ to show that you have passed from darkness to light. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified and proclaim his resurrection and share with us in his eternal priesthood. Let us welcome Alyssa into the Christ family. Jake's uh, soprano voice once in a while. We love it and be with us every week if you can. God bless.
May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. You can exchange glances, and you're far enough you can't shake hands. Our offertory hymn this morning will be 551, and Emily will sing verses 1 and 3, My Faithful Substitute. We await his coming in glory. 
and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and the blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ, and make them new. And bring us to the city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Turning to page 211. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory ever and ever. Amen. Using fraction sentence number three, Creator of all, you gave us golden fields of wheat, for whose many grains we have gathered and made into one bread. So, so may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
have been inwardly nourished and ready to follow you in all our days. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now on page 214. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is 306, verses 1, 4, and 5. Oh, for a thousand tons we sing.